Welcome back to another episode with Bernadato. Uh, today we are still quarantined in Dallas Fort Worth area, um, and and we are actually going to talk about something we talked about five previous times: the CARES Act, and really concentrating on the PPP loans because that seems to be something that most of our clients are asking lots of questions on. And so obviously we want to give some information. And Michael, I know since Friday our phones have kind of exploded uh, since the release. Maybe you can talk about what's happened since Friday. I would be willing to bet anybody listening to apply for a PPP loan will relate to what I'm about to share, which is it was chaos on Friday. And and since then, and the chaos, you know, we saw both with the banks who were trying to react and figure out how to accept loans. And of course, with all the small business owners who were in a, a mad rush to try to get applications in. Uh, that was compounded by the fact that the form changed on Friday that we all thought was going to be the form. Many banks were not ready on Friday. Some banks who thought they were ready were not actually ready. And then there was a few that, that seemed to be willing to accept loans. And so all in all, I would say you know, there was maybe 20% of our clients I spoke with that were able to successfully get an application in, and the rest were anywhere from uh, not even close to uh, thinking they were about to get it done. Yeah, and a lot of this has to do with the fact, typically, when uh, when a law is passed, they, they give the, the controlling body a lot of time to draft the rules and then they put it out for publication. So here are the actual rules that I have holding in my hands. These were published on April 2nd. And in these publications when the SBA released it, it said you can start releasing funds immediately. So that happened on Thursday night basically. And by Friday they were telling all the banks to start releasing money, which meant that overnight they had to read this packet. And in the packet it's even more confusing because it actually says that they will take comments from everyone for next 30 days. So people, banks can be, and lawyers can be submitting comments to the SBA, even though funds, funds are being lent out. So they didn't say you couldn't lend the funds. They were saying they still may tighten these rules up. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of banks are a little it's chaotic because they actually have interim final rules, not the actual final final rules. So it's, it's, it's different than how rules are normally done. Uh, and Michael, there was a lot of other uh, changes uh, that happened when, when, when these rules were kind of, re- when they were released. And uh, maybe you can kind of talk about some of the highlights that I think people were interested in, especially on the, how to calculate the, the amount that they can get. Yeah, so, you know, I think many people recognize that this loan will loan basically the average monthly payroll times two and a half. And I will say this, I'm still having conversations with the clients that are confusing this with the disaster loan that came out a few weeks ago. I had a call on Friday and a call on Saturday with uh, uh, clients who thought they were, there was one loan and they were kind of conflating the two. So I would encourage you, if that's the case, to go back and listen to some of our prior videos. The two and a half times annual um, payroll one thing we do know and have confirmed is that independent contractors is not included in that calculation. And so you're really looking at W-2 employees to get to the calculation of how much you can borrow under the PPP loan. Right. And, and so that's a, that's a shift that a lot of people weren't realizing when they're putting their, 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 uh, their information together. Yeah, I think the other two shifts, they're not huge, um, or three shifts, I would say. But well, the important enough to note is that when the law was written, it said that the highest interest rate could be 0.5%. The SBA said no, it went up to 1%. They also said that if you need to get the loan forgiven, which we'll talk about in a second, you'd have 10 years to pay it back. The SBA said no, um, they think two years is sufficient. And the final thing that was good, it was kind of talked about in the law, but solidified when they released it is, a lot of people felt like they could only go to an SBA lending bank to get this loan because that's how traditionally it's always been done. But what they said is, no, we would allow other banks to qualify, and it looks like they have opened the spigot to allow a lot of community banks that typically are not SBA lenders to also uh, work on these loans that helps take pressure, hopefully, off 
the big major banks and other SBA lenders that are out there because they were overwhelmed when Michael and I had these conversations because they were the only ones originally thought that could lend this money. So I think that helps at least get more people access to these funds from different banks. And Michael, so tell, let's talk about if it's not, what are the ways, hopefully everyone will qualify, but what are the ways it could be forgiven? Yeah, so we have talked before about this idea of this being almost like a grant that if funds are used properly, it'll be forgiven. And there's some tricks there. There's been a lot of conversation about what that means. Um, one of the one of the key struggles with trying to figure this out is a timing issue. And so they talk about use of funds over eight weeks following the loan origination date is uh, what will how you use it is what's going to dictate whether you. Um, are eligible for forgiveness. What they don't define, at least we haven't seen it yet, is what origination date means. And so I've talked to someone that was a former banker, and they said that to of art usually means the day that you apply for the loan. I've heard others say no, that's the day you're approved for the loan, and then yet others say no, that's the day you actually receive the proceeds from the loan. And so you, it creates a dilemma right now because many places are closed and to receive it right now could actually be detrimental because they don't have a business to be open to be paying their employees to then realize the forgiveness. And you counterbalance that, again, going back to this timing dilemma, is that uh, there's this you know kind of scent out there that these funds are going to be used up and that there's going to be people left without being able to take advantage of the PPP program because they've all been, all the funds have been lent. And so it is, it is a dilemma. And kind of to compound that, the SBA and their guidelines have said that when you use the funds, 75% of it has to be for payroll. So while you can use the funds for mortgage, um, rent, and utilities that can be no more than 25 percent of your use and so it really to get optimal forgiveness you have to have your staff be, be paying your staff and really for most businesses from a practical perspective they need to be open to justify bringing their staff back if they've already put them on furlough or terminated them pending you know being able to reopen Right, and what that means is obviously is if you are going to use this loan, you basically have to use it almost exclusively for your staff, and that's why it's such a hard decision if you are closed because if you don't have staff, you can't really use the loan for its intended consequences, and then therefore it's not going to be as forgive it's not forgivable uh, the way it would be otherwise for businesses that are operational. So that's the part to take away that these are the changes, and of course, like everything else we've learned in these this uh, ever living changes. It changes hourly, so maybe the SBA may be releasing something new, I'm making that up. It could be totally fake, but the point being is it's constantly changing. And so we're trying to keep up with it, keep you guys informed, and obviously uh, appreciate your feedback and, and the questions that you've been submitting to us so that we can look into it and give you back this information. Michael, I don't know if you have anything else to wrap up with today. Just one more thing. I mean, on the timing issue, I've heard and seen it things that indicate the government will expand the amount of funds available for small businesses if it's all used up. Um, it's hard to make business decisions based on that. But if you are leaning towards waiting and that's what you would decide otherwise, it is a little bit to know that that's, uh, you know, that there's potential that that will be expanded so that more funds are available. Right. Well, again, appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. And one last small note to the outside world that does not know this. Today's Michael's 50th birthday, so happy birthday, Michael. It's hard to imagine with the wear and tear of being at home and trying to homeschool kids that, that this is 50. Just <laughs> All right. Well, thank you much for joining us, and we'll talk next time. All right. Thanks.